And how many years ago was it that you came to see me? Well, two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago? Yeah, and, and uh, look, this is just, this is like heaven. I mean, this place should, in the next X number of years, proliferate like, like the wonderful idea that it is. It, it really ought to be all around the country. There should be inventive labs just growing up. Uh, and and uh, it's meeting such a huge, huge need that uh, institutions of higher learning uh, just are not. Uh, I have uh, two sons in college right now and uh, a daughter who graduated from college and uh, you know, I'm very glad they are going to college, uh, but uh, it just isn't for everyone. And uh, what what happens here is so extraordinary. You know, it, it. I came into the world of entrepreneurs through the door of ADHD. I have ADHD myself. I also have dyslexia, and when I learned about those conditions back in 1981, and realized that I had them, I realized that the the medical model, the deficit-based model, really didn't do it justice because there's so much tremendously positive that goes with these conditions. They, they're really traits, not disabilities. And, uh, and, and, um, and so as I began to learn about what ADHD and dyslexia really are, instead of thinking of them as dis disabilities, and deficit disorders, and all this kind of grumpy, pathologically laced language, I, I, I realized that these are the people who, who have made this country great. You know, these are our founding fathers and mothers. Think about it, who, who would get on a boat in 1600 and come over here? Just think about it, would you advise your son or daughter to do that? Oh yeah, go across the ocean, good chance you'll die en route, and when you get there, there's nothing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who might kill you, and, and uh, uh, what a great idea. You know, so, so just what kind of mindset? Who would do that? Well, that's our gene pool. Those are the people who founded us. Those are, and then the waves of immigration. You know, we've romanticized it, but what kind of person would be in Italy, don't speak any English, have no money, and say, oh, the answer is to go to the new country? <laughs> well, who would do that? You had to be a little bit, you know, crazy. And that's who we are as a nation. That is what has made this country great. And that's, that's what it gets, it gets, it got shoved in through the medical model into this condition that is so misleadingly called ADHD. Uh, I think we should rename it the entrepreneur's trait. Because uh, in, in my patient population, I mean, I could fill this room with people who, who I see to help them with their ADHD, who are self-made billionaires, not millionaires, billionaires. I remember, one of them said to me uh, not long ago in my office in New York, think what I could have done had I had this diagnosis in college. I said, you haven't done too badly, you know? I mean, and, and, but, uh, you know, and, and Pulitzer Prize winners, Academy Award winners, professional athletes. Uh, I've got a superstar in the NFL right now. I can't say whose name is, obviously. But, but uh, uh, people who are just achieving at the very highest level you name what walk of life it is. And I can, I, can, I, can, I can find you someone who has ADHD. If Bill Clinton doesn't have it, I'm a monkey's uncle. Now, we're, we're not supposed to diagnose people, you know, so I'm not just wondering out loud. But, and, and W certainly has it. And, and, uh, uh, you know, so, so uh, and I don't know what Trump has got. But, uh, uh, I think, I think Hillary has attention surplus. So, uh, just, so uh, but, uh, uh, you know, this condition really needs to be reframed and, and really celebrated uh, as the potentially uh, uh, incredibly positive force that it is. Now, what makes it so interesting is that it can also be terribly destructive. The entrepreneurial mind, the ADHD mind, is way overrepresented in the prison population and in the addicted population and the unemployed and the multiply divorced. Um, uh, so so, so it, it's this incredibly powerful mind. And the way I describe it to kids, I say, you know, you've got a Ferrari engine for a brain. 
You were born with this Ferrari engine. No, no, no small engine in you. You've got a powerful Ferrari, but you've got bicycle brakes. <laughs> so, but don't worry, I'm a brake specialist, you know. I, 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 but, but, you know, a Ferrari with no brakes is a very dangerous car, you know. So, so and, and that's what we see happen, you know, these people crash, you know. And, 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 and so if you don't know what's going on and you don't learn to control it, you're in big time danger. And that's why so many people with ADHD get into so much trouble. So, so, so what they need is the structure. What they need is the brakes. I do a fair amount of work with the Navy SEALs. They've all got ADHD. <laughs> you know, and, and what they, the reason they're, 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 they're close for that is the Navy SEALs combines incredible danger with enormous structure. And that's the, com that's the winning combination. And they say, one of them said to me, you know, they can't devise a training exercise dangerous enough to hold our attention. <laughs> the only way we get trained is to go out with our lives on the line. Then we pay attention, you know. And, 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 and so what the ADD entrepreneur, really, I don't, I hate the term ADHD, uh, what the entrepreneur is looking for is something exciting enough to hold his or her interest. Something that allow, allows them to feel alive. And, and, and get really engaged. Um, another analogy I use for the entrepreneurial mind, the ADHD mind, it's like Niagara Falls. It's a lot of noise and power and mist until you build a hydroelectric plant and then you light up the state of New York. This is a hydroelectric plant. You know, this is the place where you can bring all that energy, all those ideas, all that incredible power and originality and creativity and, you know, bouncing off the wall in this and, you know, disruptiveness and uh, God knows where I thought of that in this, you know, and, and, and bring it here and throw it on the floor and not know what to do with it and the people here will help you arrange it, will help you classify it will help you organize it. Instead of laughing at it and saying, that's not what the assignment was, go home and do it again. Or you need more discipline, why don't you try harder? Or you'll never get anywhere until you learn how to present yourself in a more effective way. Instead of those dream breakers, people here are dream makers. They're not finding ways to break your dream. They're finding ways to make your and that's what these folks need. What they've got going for them, you cannot buy and you cannot teach. You cannot buy and you cannot teach creativity, originality, persistence. People with ADD are incredibly persistent to the point of being stubborn. You know, you can't teach those qualities. Spunky, resilient. But, it, but until you have some structure, and until you have the force of connection, uh, the chances are you're only going to rely on luck uh, to get you to where you want to go. It's a wonderful book title. I've never read the book, but I love the title. Hope is not a strategy. So people come here with a lot of hope, and then here they get a strategy. Here they get collaboration. Here they get affirmation. Here they are recognized. I love when she said, it's my tribe. Yeah. Here they, they find others of the same ilk, of the same tribe. You know, no, I don't have to be Joe Normal. No, I don't have to be, you know, handed in on time and raise your hand before you speak. No, I don't have to be, uh, you know, the good little doobie that I was always told I should be. I can be who I am. And with some help, because as I said, Ferrari with no brakes, dangerous. With some help, I can take all this amazing energy, talent, gamush that is just pulsating through my brain all the time and turn it into something useful. Turn it into something someone will buy, pay for, uh, earn a living. Uh, and, and, and that's why I love this place. I just wish there were more places like it. I just wish parents out there didn't think the key to a wonderful life is going to Harvard, Yale, or Princeton. It's, 
as a Harvard grad myself, I'm glad I went there. Uh, did it make my life? No, it didn't, not at all. What made my life were the people that I met all along the way who encouraged me in one way or the other, the mentors. Uh, the, the, the fact that someone goes to a prestigious college, that's fine, and you, what does it give you? Well, it gives you the ability to be obnoxious at cocktail parties. You know? <laughs> uh, you know, so, so some of the most successful people I've ever met, some of the most innovative people I've ever met didn't go to college at all, let alone not going to a named college. David Nealman, man who invented the electronic ticket, who founded JetBlue, uh, he, he, he dropped out. He said, I just can't do it. I can't do college. And, and he, he was ashamed because his parents really valued education. And he got the Brigham Young and he, he said to his mother, he said, look, I'm just wasting space here. I, I just, I can't do it. And the parents were very ashamed and he left. And well, next thing you know, he found Jeff Lou. And uh, uh, is he ADD? He's so ADD. One day I'm talking to him on the phone and he says, you know, I have this tree that is, leans perilously close to my bathroom window. And in the morning when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm thinking, I really should call the tree guy. And uh, he says, evening comes, I'm brushing my teeth again. I look out, there's the tree. I haven't called the tree guy. And I say, David, let, let's call the tree guy now. He says, no, I'll do it myself. Typical ADD, by the way. <laughs> I call him back in a few months. We get to talking. I say, oh, by the way, what about that tree? He says, oh, I sold the house. <laughs> <laughs> we have different ways of solving problems. You know? and, 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 uh, uh, and, and David, David, who now is off in Brazil starting another airline, and he just bought the biggest airline in Portugal, and he's you know doing another incredible. He's got nine children, by the way. In case you think it's all about David, he's one of the most generous, giving people you'll ever meet. But the sad part of the story is. The day Jack Blue went public, in a matter of hours, he made a fortune, hundreds of millions of dollars. He said, driving home that night, was I driving home to celebrate? He said, no, I felt like the same loser who couldn't hack it in high school. See, that's what we need to prevent. Once that virus gets in, it's very hard to get rid of it. Once you don't measure up and you get told by enough people in authority, i.e. teachers and influential others, that you're a C minus person, you internalize that. And the sad part of it is that can be disabling. I have, as I said, both ADD and dyslexia. I wouldn't trade them for the world. The real disabilities, what really lessens a person are shame and fear and believing something's wrong about you, believing you're stupid, believing you don't measure up. That's what's hard to live with. That's what can hold you back. And while it didn't disable David in terms of his achievements, he's less than the happy man he really ought to be because he still feels defective. Well, this place, this place takes people in and, and, and gives them the chance to prove to themselves, and that's the key part, prove to themselves that they have value, and that they can create something of value, proven in the real world, proven in the marketplace, proven, you know, that, that wonderful book you held up, and believe me, I know how hard it is to write a book and get it followed through, and you with the table, the, you're the same guy who put the stones under my fence, right? Yeah, I'm still working, by the way. Oh, good. Uh, Ziggy. Ziggy is great, thank you. He fixed my fence so my dog couldn't crawl out. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this, this is, this is, that's why I say it's heaven. This is God's work, but this is, but it's not some fantasy. It's not some Hallmark Hall of Fame, you know, your Hallmark card. It's, it's, it's real, in the trenches, grappling with life, taking gifted people, extraordinarily gifted people, and giving them the structure, resources that they need to thrive. I, I say to folks all the time in my specialty, uh, I don't treat disabilities. I help people unwrap their gifts. And that's what's happening here, the unwrapping of I can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of this effort 
and uh, whatever encouragement I can give, it's not nearly enough. Uh, this is, I hope, the future of, of developing minds, that these, that inventive labs can become a wave that will cross not only the country, but the world, to take this special kind of mind, which is what it is, this special kind of mind, the entrepreneurial kind of mind, and give it the, the structure, the encouragement, resources it needs to change the world.